Welcome to another Burton's Media Group presentation on how to use Corona to do basic computer operations for mobile application development. In this particular presentation, I'm going to show how to connect to a remote database with the Corona SDK. In this process, I'm going to connect to a re remote MySQL database that's located on a remote server through a PHP file. Using that PHP file, I'm going to process the data, convert it into a JSON file, store that data then locally in utilizing Corona in a SQLite data file, and then read it all back in from the SQLite database and display it upon the screen. So let's get started. Now, this process that I'm talking about is known as typically as a three-tier architecture application. In a three-tier architectural application, we have a presentation or client tier, which in this case is going to be my mobile device, but quite often refers to a website or application on a remote computer. We also have a logic tier that is on a remote server and is handled by usually some type of scripting language. Um, in this case, I'm going to be using PHP because I like PHP, but it could just as easily be Python, Ruby on Rails, or whatever server-side scripting language you like to use. And then we are also going to have a database tier. On my data database, I'm going to use MySQL, though you could use Postgres, Oracle, uh, Microsoft SQL, whatever you happen to like. But I have MySQL installed on my server, so I'm going to utilize that. Now on our database tier, this is typically, as I've mentioned before, on a remote server or in the cloud. It can be on the same server as your middleware or your logic tier, in this case my PHP file. It should be designed to handle whatever your expected traffic is. So, And, and this is, of course, referring to the server. The data needs to be able to handle whatever kind of traffic you're expecting for that application. Um, obviously, if you're expecting a lot of traffic, you don't want to be using Microsoft Access or something like that. MySQL, Oracle, uh, a professional grade piece of database software should handle whatever you're going to be doing. I'll be using my server that I use for hosting and it's going to be using MySQL with a simple single table inside the database. Now on the logic tier, this can be the same or a different server, depending on whatever your security needs are or traffic expectation is. It can be any scripting language that can run on your server. It's going to control the flow of the information between the client and the server. That's basically what your middle tier or your logic tier is supposed to handle. It's providing a layer of security and protection between your client and your server. Uh, this is going to handle all the formatting, the interpretation of the information. In my particular case, it's also going to do the encoding, converting the information from the MySQL database into a JSON format to then be sent to the client. In this case, uh, Corona application running on an iPhone. Now, the client tier can be any kind of remote device. And as I just said, it, in my case, it's a mobile phone, could be an iPad, could be an Android device, uh, could be a, a Windows device, whatever you're using for your client. I'm using the Corona SDK for my client-side programming because I can develop with it about 10 times faster than I can natively with Java or Objective-C. Um, I like the Corona SDK. I like it so much that I wrote a book on it. It's, it's really easy to use. Um, it does allow deployment for multiple operating systems. It allows for faster development than your native, and it has built-in support for JSON and for various types of networking. So now let's take a look at what each of the tiers actually looks like in the development. My, I created a simple database using the PHP database administration software that comes with my server hosting, and I created the best movies of all time, in my opinion. If you don't agree with me, I don't really care. I like these movies. I think they're some of the best. They're ones that I can watch again and again. So this is a simple MySQL database. It has only three fields in it, one table, nothing spectacular. I just threw four movies in it to show the process and that it was working single table database. This could just as easily be a much more complex database with hundreds of tables. Uh, the, the middleware handles all of that, so I'm not really concerned, concerned about any of that type of information. On the logic tier, this is where we're going to be connecting to the database on that remote server. 
Uh, I'm going to just simply create a loop to capture the data and format it into a JSON format and return JSON data to the requesting device. So here's my PHP. As you can see, I've I'm just I've got it lo hosted on the same host, so I can use the local host command. Set up your username, set up your password, which no, I did not include those in this particular show, but you, you can try this experiment yourself and set your own database example and your own password and be able to go. My database name was my movies. I then create my MySQL connect statement and do the call, set up the SQL statement, doing a select from best movies, putting the result of that query into a variable called result, and then we're going to create a a variable named JSON, which may not be the best name to use for that, but I use JSON for that, and we'll create that as an array, and then we'll just simply iterate through the rows that result from the SQL call and load those into JSON. Now, as you can see, this is dollar sign JSON, left bracket, right bracket, so that it uh, creates it as an array, and each one of these is going to be bracketed into the information to be stored. We close the database and then I echo back to the requesting client the JSON information that is does a JSON encode, again handled by the PHP software. On the client side, I'm using Corona Project Manager for my management of this particular application. And let's take a look at what the code does. Now, the best way to read any Corona application is usually from the bottom up. So I'm going to jump down to the bottom so that we can see it since functions all need to be declared before they're actually utilized. I do create four variables in this particular application. Um, we pull in our SQLite information, we pull in our JSON information using requires, and then I've just simply got two, two uh, variables for storing that data, my new data and decoded data. So let's take a look at how this happens. So the first thing that needs to happen is I need to do a network request. Now that's all I need to do utilizing Corona to connect to the web. I just simply do a network request, give it the URL that I'm calling, tell it that I want to get the information. We have get, post, all the standard um, HTTP information, and then pass any results to the function network listener. So I created a function called network listener. Always a good idea if you're going to have a function do something that you have the function. Passing it the event information that comes back. Um, we we'll just check to make sure that we are connected to the network. If we're not connected to the network, it will display to the terminal that I got a network error. Otherwise, we're going to store in my new data everything from the event. Um, I do tell that to print to the terminal so that I know that I am getting data. And then we just simply say decode the data, json.decode my new data, and I store that in the decoded data variable. From there, um, originally, I was thinking about storing that in a, uh, initially showing what came back in a text field, but I decided not to do that. Just simply move on to saving the information to a database from there. One thing that I learned is uh, we were working through this material. I was working through this example with a class. I didn't call saved, save data inside of my network listener. Instead, I was trying to do it outside of the network listener. The phone is much faster than the internet. So it was trying to process that information that had come in, decode that information, and save that inform information before there was actually any information to be saved. So once we moved save data into the network listener and it functions after we actually decode the data, there's actually data for it to process and then it can pass that information back. So that's always a good idea, If just in case you were curious about uh, why you were receiving data, but it wasn't processing any data. It could be that you're trying to process the data before you've actually received it. Just simply put that as part of your call to that function as part of your network listener, and that eradicates the problem. Okay, so let's look at the save data function that I created for handling all that information. So what save data does is it's going to save my new data to a SQL like file. The first thing that we do is we check to see if, or we set up the path, this is being stored in the systems documents directory. Always save anything that needs to be persistent in data to the documents directory. Uh, there's also a temporary directory, but there's no guarantee that anything that needs to be persistent will be there the next time in persistent directory. Uh, never save information to 
the same directory that's storing your uh, your actual code or your actual program in your sandbox because that's going to send off all kinds of viral alarms because data is changing in its location where the program stored that's a really really bad t thing and that's usually something a virus would do uh, that'll usually cause your program to be locked out of the mobile device that you're working with and you're no longer able to utilize it so always save to documents directory we'll do a call to sqlite3.open if the file does or if the database does not exist it will actually create it and then I just simply print to the terminal the path for where that was created at in case I need to find that on the simulator on the local computer system that I'm testing it on. We'll then create a table setup that checks to see if the table has been created if it has not it will create it otherwise it's going to just simply create a table called my movies uh, it's just going to have a primary key the name of the movie and the year and then executes the setup then we're going to iterate through the information that came from my decoded data I'll, i created a counter set it equal to one and then we're going to iterate through the movie information that's been returned utilizing the json file so we iterate through saying movie one movie two movie three movie four etc till we reach the end i do check with the while statement if the movie that we are loading in is equal to nil that means we've reached the end of the list and there's no sense in trying to add additional information so assuming that there's value in the movie we're going to load that into the my movies table passing it the movie information the title and the name and then executing that I increment my counter increase the movie counter information and then continue the while that should save and has in the past saved everything to my SQLite database so we can close that database and then just to go one more step to show that the information has all been saved to the local device I then I close it and then I reopen the database and pull the information from my movies and display it to the screen just as uh, a standard new text here here we just simply do a four rows for the number of rows that are in the database returned we we just simply build a simple text information which is the name of the movie and the year the movie was uh, released and then display that to the text so let's launch it and there we go pulling all the information from the remote server then passing it back to the actual device itself now if you're curious to see some of the print statements I do have those here as well you can see it pulled where, where it's storing my corona information and through the simulator where it's created the database from the server I receive the JSON formatted information which is movie one movie two movie three and movie four which is why I did the formatting in, in the saving of the information as I was iterating through it uh, passing it all the field information fiddler on the roof the matrix the princess bride best movies ever Monty Python and the Holy Grail and then we show the path where it's going to create the SQLite database does a call to create the table creates the table and then we insert into the movies the the four movies and we're done so I hope that gives a clear or at least a better understanding of how a remote server can be accessed pulling that information through JSON interpreting it and then pulling it into a local database now of course the things that you can do with this are near infinite um, this is a great way to be able to update databases from a remote server if your content changes without having to republish an entire database or republish an entire application it greatly simplifies being able to update applications without a out having to republish the entire application I will be putting this full post on Burton's media group.com forward slash blog it will have all of the code details so that you can see exactly how to do everything in case you weren't able to pick it up through the video also you might want to check out one of my books uh, I've got several books beginning mobile app development with Corona SDK and I'm working on a new book which will soon be released uh, late 2012 that is learning mobile app development and I expect to include 
this particular example with a full explanation written out on how all of it works. Hopefully you found all of this useful. Have a great day. I look forward to seeing your apps.